and welcome to a very special edition of previously unseen clips from this series of Would I Lie to You? Joining David Mitchell tonight, Claudia Winkleman, Nick Robinson, Nadia Hussein, David Hay, Ramesh Ranganathan, Catherine Ryan, John Simpson, Professor Kate Williams, Michael Smiley, and Jason Manford. And joining Lee Mack tonight, Bob Mortimer, Mel Gedroich, Harry Shearer, Brian Blessing, Diane Morgan, Martin Kemp, Sarah Cox, Hugh Dennis, and Tracy Ann Olderman. So we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Uh, David Hay, you're first up tonight. Possession. Possession. Ah, there's a box under your desk there. There's a little card in there. Yeah. Just read the card first and then show us what's in the box. This is a dog toy I chew to release tension before a fight. <laughs> right, now pop the toy on the desk, put the box back down. Do you chew this every fight? Before every fight, yeah. Yeah. It's like day, day, day of sort do, of situation. Do what you do, David, before... Wow. Imagine it's before a fight. <laughs> Can I just say, David, that your eyes at that moment definitely said, I wasn't expecting that. It's always made that noise. This relaxes you before a fight. Yeah. When you say before a fight, you mean the, the hour before? When I'm in the hotel before the fight, I normally get to the hotel. If I'm fighting at 10 pm, I get to the hotel around four or five, chilling out there. Just literally, just I'll sit lying on the bed, just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes me feel comfortable. Then I go to sleep. Wake up, and charge. What are good. the people in the room next to you in the hotel? What are, what are they thinking is happening? <laughs> yeah, they think you're making love to a clown. Yeah. <laughs> are we allowed to look at it? Yeah, you can have it. Yeah, yes, yes but... let's have a little look. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's chewed. It has been quite. It has been chewed. So, what are you going to say, Lee? Is it the truth or has he made this up? I don't, I don't know. No. What do we think? No. That's you don't not, think he? No, I think that's a lie. What do you think? It is well chewed, <laughs> but then somebody here backstage could have chewed on it for a well, couple of weeks. Well, we That's need... a hard job, isn't it? <laughs> what about it's your day? Well, it's your lucky day. Get chewing on that for two hours. Well, you know, they might have done. <laughs> I hate this job. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'm going to be Director <laughs> General. <laughs> so what are you going to say? We'll go for a lie. You're saying it's a lie? Yeah. OK, David, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you're up next. I recently had to charm a spider out of my shoe by tooting a flute at it. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. <laughs> um, so, where, where were you? I was at home. So, is this spider a normal British domestic spider? Yes. H how big was it, Bob? It was... It's black, but it's not... <laughs> and what colour was it? <laughs> 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 well, I was telling, It's not the ones that have got a little body and big, long legs. Mm. No, no, sorry, it wasn't the type with a, with a small body and long legs. Yeah, no. What type was it? it was well, you one... can wear the rest out yourself, surely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big body, small legs. Yeah. <laughs> Was this a gerbil? <laughs> no, that's a if bird. If it would a gerbil, I'd have used a loot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> it's actually just a very everyday situation. My wife doesn't like um, spiders, very scared of them, and it's kind of my job to get rid of spiders. I don't like them either. I'm not going to use my hands or whatever. No, you wouldn't. Can like you it. mime the, the blow moment? Don't fall for this. Sorry? <laughs> He gets me with this every week. Yeah. Don't fall for it, man. I've got just a thing for you if you haven't got a flute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. Did you blow it into the shoe? Yes, I blew down the flute to bring it out into the heel area. Mm -hmm. These were a kind of snakeskin elastic slipper. Yeah. I brought up just under the windowsill, above where the cat litter is. Yeah. I put them there 
because I wanted to get that height and it didn't so come out. So you, I moved, it. This, yes, you I, moved the slipper with the spider in it? I moved it, facing the cupboard where I keep the plates. <laughs> <laughs> there's got, I can't, I mean, it's got little holes in it. <laughs> and the spider emerged. <sighs> so the spider emerged but didn't leave the shoe or slipper? No, didn't leave Did the, the slipper. slipper. Didn't no, leave the slipper? Just... I had a look around <laughs> and went back in. <laughs> Well, so I you were know. no better off, were you? No, no then... I didn't feel like I was better off, but I, I, at least I'd um, found out that we owned a flute as a family. <laughs> if I was scared of spiders, I wouldn't go anywhere near that slipper. I'd just leave it. I would just let... I'm not I, that scared, I'm... I'm... Are you not? Scared I'm of one to ten? I'm ginger about them. OK. Yeah. Ginger? Is that right? A ginger, is that a word? It is, yeah, That's yeah. a word. Yeah. <laughs> It's the correct word in that yeah, situation. Yes, yes, yes. It's like you, you pick something up gingerly. gingerly. It's not. It doesn't just mean the flavour ginger. <laughs> a ginger nut is not just a biscuit. It could be a tentative testicle. <laughs> Do you now know who the flute belongs to? Yes, of course. It was my son's flute. Your son? Is he a yeah. flautist? No. We hoped he would be. But he could never find the flute. <laughs> 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 well, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm confused by is that if you fear spiders... I do a bit. ..and you believe that there's a spider in this shoe, I think you would be afraid to move the shoe. Yes. Not at all. I also think you would have worried about... As you go to take the breath to blow it, you accidentally breathe in. Yes! Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I don't have to breathe in to breathe out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what, which way are you leaning? It sounds too much like the surreal world of Bob Mortimer to be actually the truth. I think it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie? You think it's a lie? Yeah. No, nobody in the world owns a flute, really, do they? <laughs> <laughs> You think it's a lie? You think it's yeah. a lie? Yeah. Bob, truth or lie? It was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's John. OK. I once saw a six-foot goldfish in the jungles of South America. Please, team. Were you working? I was working. What were you doing? I was filming this um, this village, these these uh, these this tribe, and they made me drink the hallucinogenic <gasps> drug. Are you telling us now that you imagined you saw a six foot goal? Yeah. Oh. Well, well, I don't think I imagined it. I mean, he spoke to me. It can't have been that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh -huh. And um, and he had. What a... did he say? He said, "How's it going, man?" <laughs> And what did it, you say? Well, I didn't say very much, cos it, it isn't very often that a six-foot goldfish with a straw hat <laughs> speaks to you, you know? It, it's, it's a rarity, mm. isn't it? I mean, then, I think you'd agree. Oh, definitely. I it would doesn't say, happen man. every day, does he it? He had a straw hat on. He had a straw hat. Village. And you, what, what did you have? Well, this is hallucinogenic drug they drink. Yes. And, and I thought I could take a little... Uh, sip, you know, and say, oh, yes, how nice, thank you very much, uh, you know, perhaps I'll drink the rest later or something. And the whole village crowded round to see, watch me drink it. And so Are you I... sure they were there, John? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> of course we, they were there. I'd crowd around too if I was going to watch an old white man get off his face for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and at first, nothing happened. And I, I, I was a little bit disappointed. And then um, the moon, there was a full moon, and it kind of came down on a spring right in my <laughs> face. And the trees started talking to one another. Have I uh, still got you with me? And, uh... Back to you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> John Simpson, off my face, Afghanistan. <laughs> So, what are you thinking? I think he probably is telling the truth. I think it's a lie. OK, I say it's a lie too. OK, they're saying it's a lie. John, truth or lie? Well, it's, um... It's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, you're next. I used to eat so many carrots that I began to turn orange. Oh, come on. <laughs> Please, team. Now, have you always had red hair? Yes. So it wasn't that that caused it? No, they made my face yeah. and my 
well, my face and my hands and my arms and, and this part of me go orange. How many carrots were you eating? Well, um, about uh, 25 on a normal day. Oh. 25 20 carrots? But, but if that thing's got <laughs> Are stressful... Are you talking batons or real carrots? No, real, real ones. They're big, hairy, organic carrots. If things got stressful and there was a lot of things going on, I could hit up to 50. 50 carrots a day? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why would you not? They're really nice. No. No, they're not that no, nice. No, they're not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried a Twix? <laughs> <laughs> Because if you like carrots, a Twix will blow you away. <laughs> Can I just get a point? Kate, have you ever seen the original uh, film The Thing from Outer Space? James Arness plays The Thing, about nine feet tall, and they called him the Carrot Man. Is that what inspired you? <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's what I call a very specific question. <laughs> Tell you, Brian, I did drink a lot of tea. I used to drink 25 cups of that. Carrot and I had to tea. stop. And in places of the 25 cups of tea, I ate carrots instead. So <laughs> carrots were your tea methadone. Yes. <laughs> and what did you get off the carrots with? <laughs> Heroin. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as you stopped, it, it stopped, did it? Well, it was a fight, Lee. It was a fight to give up these things that I'd love. But they're not addictive but... carrots. They're not like How tea. How do you know? Have you... Are they really I'll are. I'll tell you I cos I have a few and that's enough. <laughs> No, that's how oh, you tell addiction. yourself you haven't got a problem, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, and T, what are you thinking of this? Could she be telling the truth? <laughs> Kevin, I think it's the truth. Okay, Brian, I think you're telling the truth. Okay, two trues. I'll go with my team. My okay, team say they're true. saying true. So, Kate, was that the truth or was it a lie? My love for carrots is absolutely true. Wow. Yeah. 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 Martin Kemp, you're next. All right, here we go. Come on, Kempy. Come on. I was once rescued by London Underground staff after my new romantic pantaloons got trapped in the escalator. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. C can you yeah. describe the pantaloons? pantaloons? Well, pantaloons... Players. Like, Always standing you know, up. In those days, they used to come up to about there, up past your ankles, and they would kind of bend out like this and... Like pirate's you know, trousers. Yeah, yeah. kind of like... Pirate's trousers. And you were you were doing West. How long ago was this? What, what, what? 1980s. Oh, really early though. This is before the band started. So it was while I was still going to the Blitz, which was kind of like. Well, not in the forties, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the last. <laughs> the last of the great pop cultures. <laughs> so when you say the Blitz, this is yeah, a nightclub. A nightclub. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to wear these pants. And one night, right, we decided to have a party on the circle line that would just completely keep going around and around. <laughs> Getting all down to the tube, my pantaloons got stuck in the escalator. And how long did it take them to arrive and free you? Oh, it was a good 20 minutes. Did it but... stop? Did they turn off the escalators? Yeah, it stopped moving? it actually got jammed. It got, it got jammed, jammed by yeah, some there was team. some kind of monitor in it or something. It stopped Back in it. what day was this? What, what was 1982. Five? I don't like the sensors. There's no sensors back in... then. People used to get their fingers chopped off oh, and all sorts. No. In, in the no, early this, 80s. This jammed it. This went right in. And as soon as you jammed in it, it stopped it automatically. Stopped yeah, because it pulled half of my trousers down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that an early 80s pantaloon yeah. would be enough to <laughs> stop the mechanism because of what? a whole escalator. What decade of pantaloon would have been able to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, like a real pirate's Hessian <laughs> pantaloon, that could stop it. That is exactly what they were. Right. What are you thinking? I can see that the haymaker is very dismissive. Well, I think it's a very good point you make about the mechanisms of early 80s yeah. escalators. Some of them were wooden. Yes. You know, I, I, I think they'd just keep turning. <laughs> I don't what, think they'd stop because of a pantaloon. What year was the uh, digital watch made? That was like... Oh. Yeah, that'll tie this all up together. No, no, no. <laughs> So you're saying that, that the time when they just had digital watches, they had sensors that sensed when a, someone's trousers were stuck in a lift that stopped. I don't, I don't yeah. buy it. Don't underestimate the voluminosity of a Spandau Ballet pantaloon in 82. They were big. There was a lot of material in those pantaloons. Yeah. Well, there had to be. <laughs> So what are you going to say, David? You what are you going to say? I think it's true, I, yeah, I think it might. You I, think lie? I, I think lie. Ooh. I think it's a lie. All right, Martin, is it a lie or is it true? This much is lie. <gasps> oh. <laughs> David, you're up next.
I've yet to find the courage to make a contactless card payment. <laughs> I considered it once, but decided that full pin entry was the safer method. <laughs> <laughs> Please, team, what do you think of that? <laughs> what do you fear, David? Well, it's a security risk, isn't it? Why is it a security risk? Well, because you don't have to put in your pin. The only security that's relevant is yeah. that you know it's you. If you know it's fine, contactless and the pin's the same thing. But who among us can be sure of who we really are? <laughs> That's true. Where did you consider using it, David? Where, well... I've considered it a few times in a oh, few right. places, because sometimes people suggest it, which I think is rather forward. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know you, so they suggest, you say, I'm sorry, am I keeping you? You know, you haven't got time for me to enter four digits now. <laughs> yeah. Do you have an Oyster card? Uh, yes. Ah, so you are happy with contactless there. If the Oyster card gave you the option of putting in a pin, I'd be all for it. But that's <laughs> never been set up like that. Yeah. And I'm not so weird as to go into Oyster HQ and ask to have a particular high-security Oyster card <laughs> issued especially for me. It's very hard to get into Oyster HQ, isn't it? Yeah. You have to get, like, a knife and yeah. prize it open. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, what have you got? We have to get past Pearl on reception. <laughs> Have you ever used it, then? Have you used it once? Um... <laughs> I've, I've yet to find the courage, so no. Do you have a mobile phone? I have a mobile phone. Would you phone. ever use Apple Pay? On that? We can't call it that. Orange, well, we can't do oh, they're, no. they're a company as well. Would you ever use um, Pay? Would you ever use your mobile phone? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, can, because no, I, I sometimes it, do that. I, I'm quite happy to get my phone out in M&S, and I feel quite cool. I hold it, and mm. it pays it. Do you want a receipt? No. No, wow. I've, I've never paid for anything You've like that. You've never paid for anything with Apple Pay? No. What? What are you talking about? Have you, you just got a new... Phone, have you, are you starting phone some new adverts that we don't know about, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you think? What do we think? I've, I'm very scared of it, so... Scared of I empathise with that, so, yeah, why yeah, not? OK. It yeah. seems so obviously him. So you've got to go for a truth. I think he fears it, yeah. OK, you're saying it's true. David, you fear contactless payment, <laughs> truth or lie? <laughs> it is, in fact, a lie. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> Tracy Ann, you're up next. I have never ever drunk a can of fizzy drink in my life. What? <laughs> never, ever. It's a limit to what we can ask here. <laughs> have you ever had a can of Coke? Never. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> seven up? Nope. Do you not like fizzy drinks? All the evidence is there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> do you not... I do know you don't like fizzy drinks. Because, to me, even as a child, water was something that was natural and lovely and pure. And why somebody would stick even carbon... As a, as a teenager! ..and sugar... Now, even as a young child, it just felt like the devil's work. So, tracy Ann, can I tempt you to try a sugary, carbonated drink? Now, <laughs> would you be willing to try one of these? Bring it over, and we'll, let's see how far I can get in the process. Look. The whole thing with the, 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 the big famous one is 125 years old. It's a secret recipe. The fact that it's still a secret after 125 years means it was made by the devil. <laughs> this is a diet drink. This is full sugar. But this is also a sugary drink. Rob, can I ask, what, what is the point of this exercise? <laughs> to see if I'm lying. Well, well no, if... because you obviously... You, you're clearly going to be capable of going, oh, no, I don't want a fizzy drink. <laughs> you're not going to be such a fizzy drink addict that you can't stop yourself from going, oh, yes, I do love it! I do love it, actually! Yes, it was a lie and I'd do it again! <laughs> because if she is telling the truth, what a lovely opportunity. What How lovely... often have you seen a, a grown woman <laughs> taking her first sips of a sugary carbonated drink? <laughs> the best thing this can be <laughs> is cruel. <laughs> right, OK, which one are you going for? That one. Right, so I we can lose. Want... I... We can lose these two. Let's you bring it here. Okay. I haven't shut your You've face. You've made this the most light entertainment <laughs> bit I've ever seen. I'm going to lose them two. Those two. Those are safe. That's your boss, Fair on. They're, they're, they're fine. You're just playing now for the red cow, love. Just the red cow. Where have you come from tonight, <laughs> Tracy? <Anne? laughs> you want to give a wave to everybody back at home there? She's gone for the red cow. The red cow. So good thing. this may or may not be Tracy Ann's first <gasps> time. Drinking a sugary carbonated oh, drink. Don't drink it if you, if don't, you don't want to. It, yeah. You've made your point. <sighs> Have I? You have don't I? have to. <laughs> oh, I'm getting better at the opening. 
No, it's just it's wrong. Can you not it's even no. sip it? I no. think that's so, that's Tracy right. Annie, you're definitively saying that you're not going to drink. <gasps> She's drinking it. Oh. Oh, my God, it's everything I thought it was going to be. It's disgusting. It's... Oh, get used to that phrase, Rob. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> All right, there we are. So, what are you going to say? Was she acting? I think you are She's been brilliant. in EastEnders. Would she be that good an actress to convince you? <laughs> I instinctively, I, I like the, you know, the, the shiny cans were yeah, great, yes. you know, the different colours. I think it's a great addition to the yes. format. <laughs> um, I think we think it's a lie. OK. Right. Tracy Ann, truth or lie? It's the truth. Ah! No. <laughs> Hugh, you're up next. As a child, my family weren't able to have a dog, so instead we got a cat and treated it like a dog. David Steen. When you say weren't able to have a dog, was, was there a medical reason? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... It, essentially, there was nowhere to exercise a dog where we lived. So my parents decided that it wasn't really fair to have a dog. Where did you so live? So I wasn't able... Well, weirdly, it was called the Isle of Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what was the cat called? The cat was called Kiska. Kiska. Yeah. If anything, it's quite a feline name, isn't it? Well, it was a cat, of course. <laughs> <laughs> How do you treat a, a, a cat like a dog? You put it on a lead and you take it for walks. Isn't that <laughs> exercising the cat? That is exercising the cat. Yeah. I thought that was the very reason why you couldn't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you were unable <laughs> to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever we went during the day, the cat came with us. On a lead. Yeah, on a lead, but, but the lead isn't really long enough for a cat, so we used to tie a 30-foot washing line... <laughs> <laughs> ..to the lead, and you could walk at least 30 yards. <laughs> <laughs> and dry your clothes at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, take this, um, you take the cat out in the car. What yeah. would be the arrangement in the car if you're going on a journey? Well, my dad built the cat a shelf which went <laughs> from the dashboard of the passenger seat <laughs> and slotted in... <laughs> Can I just say, if into this... the metal of the headrest. If this turns uh, out to be a lie and they get it right that it's a lie, <laughs> you have made life extremely hard for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't the cat shelf? just be on the seat? Why does the cat, cat need a shelf? Because the cat couldn't see if it was on the set. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you thinking, David's team? The thing that I find very believable, because I don't think you would have invented it, is the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actually and treating the, the cat like in. a dog or like a cat, but just, like, I don't know, like a book. <laughs> <laughs> or like a, like a catalogue. I... I... <laughs> what are you going to say? You think, think a lie? I think a lie. I think a lie. A lie? Well, we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? OK. <laughs> Hugh Dennis, is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact, true. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Nick, you're next. I am the BBC Newsroom's rock, paper, scissors champion, having recently stolen the crown from George Alagaya. <laughs> wow, these two. Uh, how often is the championship? Oh, well, quite often at the end of a news bulletin. People are there. There's, a, know, there's championship a championship at the end of every news bulletin. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone. What? You know, if it's not been a particularly often, stressful day. How often would you say that you've had a, a championship at this in your office? Well, not, not every day is the, the championship, but there might be a particular contest. OK, I'll ask Different. you one more time, Nick, and then I'm... <laughs> you see, you know how frustrated I'll you get when you're you. interviewing a politician? Yeah. I'll put it to you. <laughs> <laughs> How often is what you would call the championship? I, th I think it's more random than it is regular. See, I was often at Downing Street doing broadcasting and not Is in the there newsroom. a delay between what I'm speaking <laughs> and so what you ears are perceiving. Because I want to know, on average, per year, how many times you would have what well, they call a championship. And trust me, I will not stop asking this question. <laughs> I am persistent. Around about 20 a year. 20 a year. So you are the current champion. Who was the one that you took over from? George Alagaya. George, Alagaya. George Alagaya. Who was the previous champion before George? Hugh Edwards. And before him? 
Fiona yeah. Bruce. All right, let me rephrase the question. Can you just randomly list newsreaders? <laughs> That's what's going on here. Why don't there's a very easy way? Why don't you nominate Lee, someone on your team, to represent yeah, your I mean. team in rock paper so scissors? So prove he's telling the truth. We're going to give him a chance to have a 50-50 chance of getting ah, but something. But it's not 50-50, is it? Like no. if you went up against Darren Brown, I reckon he'd probably win 100 percent of the time. Do you know what? Weirdly, I'm joking, but there is actually. This well, is I true. know there is. So why don't you told me about this? Why don't you try this technique now, you idiot? Okay. That's what I'm trying to get you to do. <laughs> So we'll play now then between it'll be you right. representing you. Right, can I just well now you've right. got to work out at what point you're gonna show your paper oh, or yeah. your stuff. Because some do it on the third, so the or they third. do one, two, I, three, and I, then that, do thank it. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Um, this show <laughs> does have a host. <laughs> I can guarantee will that you I'll win over best of three. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna say something to you, and then you we don't you can't pause, you just gotta do it. Okay. So, are you ready? Right, can I genuinely say I think you're a terrible broadcaster? Here we go. One, two, two three. three, boom! Oh, rock beats scissors. He's oh, beaten you. Oh. Good. Good. One yeah. there. Don't let him get oh, yeah. his head next. <laughs> are you ready for the second one? And can I also say genuinely that your glasses are awful? One, two, two three. three, boom! Oh, paper beats rock. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. No, it's oh, not that. So we've reached possibly the most tense moment yeah. of this competition. <laughs> it's a decider. Lee, do you want to try some subterfuge? Backstage, you're a bit smelly. <laughs> One, two, three, boom! Ooh. Oh. 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 We've got to try again. We've got to go again. Oh my We've got God. to go again. I'm running out of insults and I don't want to say bald. <laughs> <laughs> but you've left me no option. I didn't know he was going to go to a penalty shootout. <laughs> If this keeps being a draw by number 27, I've had your wife! <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. She still remembers. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> three, boom! Yeah! Oh, 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 the theory still holds, because it would have to be over a longer period of time. There has been some scientific evidence to prove that if you insult somebody directly before rock, paper, scissors, they are slightly more likely to use scissors. You're saying somebody, somebody got a grant to do research on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nick is, Nick is obviously very good at it. He's, he's beaten you. Yes. Is he the newsroom champion? OK. We'll say it's a lie. OK. Nick, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's all we've time for on this special edition of Would I Lie To You. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>